you know, I'll be a little bit philosophical here. I think that, that privacy is a fundamental human truth. But I don't think it's a fundamental human right because privacy is a standard that changes over time. We talked about on the panel a uh, hundred years ago, no one knew what your house looked like up on top of that hill. But today, anybody can Google my name, find my address, and take a good look, a satellite shot at my house. So the standards of privacy have changed. What we're doing today is looking at a rapidly evolving medical system and applying today's standard of privacy to a system that is already maybe two, three, four, five years out. So I think we have to revisit privacy and it's gonna be upsetting to a lot of people just as it was upsetting to that guy a hundred years ago who if we told him or her that we could see his house through this newfangled thing called a camera or a satellite. Now that being said, I think that we have to impose a certain level of privacy, but we have to revisit it. And I think that HIPAA is a fundamental guideline for clinical and medical privacy, but it might be time to revisit it because I think some of the, some of the language, the wording, and the ideas are probably a throwback to, to almost a prior generation of care. But I think the challenge when it comes to having the discussion of privacy when it comes to patient care is that it is inherently sensitive. Take the example of a celebrity. A celebrity often has to hide. Some celebrities come and speak out about their disease process. But that's a good example of I'm known for this, therefore I cannot publicly speak about this. Or I want, I'm known for this, I want to become a spokesperson. That same level brought down to anybody Maybe someone who's not a celebrity, just an average person, a human being. Your disease process is sensitive to you. You may not want to be a spokesperson. So that's the bottom line, is that it's human disease and it's sensitive. And you may not want to publicly share it with anybody outside of your doctor. And that's why I think that's a challenging part. You know, yes, you might want, not want to publicly share. But I think we're actually becoming a society that is no longer organ donors, but data donors. And I think that there's a Faustian bargain that we get when we share data. Mm -hmm. And let's say, you know, Waze or Google Maps, we get certain information for allowing people to know where we have been which to one standard is a tremendous intrusion in privacy. Mm -hmm. But I think there's going to be a bit of that reciprocal relationship where we will share aspects of our genome because that's going to optimize disease management. And I think that's all in a tremendous state of flux. So to try to kind of focus in on one hard thing now is, is intrinsically difficult. And I think that's the challenge, that we're in a system of flux and we're trying to find it, define it in rigid terms. A cha it's a challenge for anybody that wants to get into the digital space. You know, when Uber first came out, many people said, I don't want to put my credit card on there. When, Apple, when the Apple wallet came out, there's always this fear of putting my information in the digital space. And so every time there's a major breach, I think, especially the older generation that has caught on to social media and smartphones and such, still has that healthy skepticism. And that skepticism is quite yeah. healthy because there are breaches. Now I know that you know you believe in ways of the genome so you might disagree but it is true. I think it's a wake-up call. I think it's fair to say that, yeah. that breaches in security are are sort of moments of sort of heightened awareness but it's not going to change anything. Yeah. Privacy is dead. Sheila I'm sorry to tell you I think it's it's gone and it's changed in basic and fundamental ways.